Time for the word on Wall Street. Top investors watching your money this week. Joining me right now is the Gartman Letter Editor and Publisher, Dennis Gartman, Payne Capital Management President, Ryan Payne, and Walser Wealth Management President, Rebecca Walser. Great to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Rebecca, kick us off here. Want to look at futures boosted by earnings reported this morning. We are expecting a pretty good gain at the start of trading. But yesterday was a completely different story. Coronavirus fears, stimulus uncertainty sent the market down sharply. Dow Industrials down 650 points. How should we read yesterday's sell-off? And are you expecting the earnings story to dictate where this market goes next? Yeah, Maria, yesterday was not fun. I hate those days, you know, but uh, very painful. But I was hoping for this uh, re overreaction kind of green uh, sea today. And I think that's what we're going to have so far, unless we get some earnings news that's unexpected. And so, uh, you know, I think for today, we've got obviously just Microsoft on the tech front. And then we've got uh, Pfizer, Merck, Eli Lilly, mostly farms today and, and those kinds of things. Other, obviously others. But, um, you know, I think yesterday is an overreaction. I'm really waiting for uh, people. And, and it was really interesting, Maria, how all the news really hyped the case increases this weekend. It was almost like a drumbeat, like, you know, oh, my gosh, the second wave is here. And, and it's this total desperation for the markets. And, and I don't see that. I mean, I think we need to focus more on hospitalization, utilization and death rates, because those are a lot better. This is not the virus that we were dealing with in March and April. We investors don't need to panic. The election is one week from today. Things are going to look better. Let's just try to maintain a sea of calm calm and not overreact to case counts because remember case counts is never what it was about it was always about hospital utilization if it's going to make the hospitals unaccessible or death rates of course and all of those are looking so much better even as the case counts are rising so yeah. i would just love investors to be well, calm and, this week it's a good point because when you see more lockdowns people start questioning the backdrop the economic backdrop that has been so strong and housing has been one of those strong points dennis but yesterday we saw news that september home sales missed expectations down three and a half percent month over month uh, are we looking at the housing market getting fatigued here this has been the leading area of strength in the broader economy what's the impact here dennis Maria, it's possible that it's getting a bit fatigued, but let us understand, we were over a million annualized units in, in single family homes only a month and a half ago. We've dropped back under a million. Let's understand that going through late, from late 15 through early last year, we were averaging about 600,000. So if this were a stock, if you looked at the chart of housing sales over the course of the last five years, you'd buy it because it's broken out on the upside. Also, remember, these are very small, uh, uh, po uh, polls that are taken, you, you're, th this, this number is prone to enormous revisions from one month to the next. The fact that we're at or very near a million annualized units for single family home sales is really quite astonishing to me. It's, it's a very, very strong uh, signal for the economy. People are moving out of their parents' basements and buying houses for the first time in a long time. And I don't see this, stop, th this ending anytime soon. So as long as interest rates remain where they yeah. are, and I don't see them rising too much over the course of the next year or two, housing starts, are, single family home sales are likely to remain above 900,000 annualized and, and, and tempt and get to and, and around and through a million annualized units on a rather consistent basis. Very impressive. All right. Well, yeah, this is this is obviously a rate story and we got rock bottom interest rates. That's not changing anytime soon. So we'll watch the housing market continue its leadership. Ryan, we had breaking news. Let's talk tech. AMD is acquiring Xilinx in a thirty five billion dollar deal. That's one area of technology that we are looking at this morning. Semiconductors. You've got a big deal on the on the tape. Also, you've got the CEOs from Facebook, Twitter and Google set to testify before the Senate Commerce Committee. Uh, the Senate committee is going to be uh, hearing these CEOs next month. You've also got a House hearing coming up this week. They're going to face questions over Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act, a law essentially shielding them from lawsuits over content posted their platforms. It's pretty clear they're not bulletin boards, Ryan, and these uh, policies may very well change. Do you want to still own these stocks if they lose that liability protection? Well, first off, I just love when these big, uh, you know, these leaders of tech go on to Capitol Hill and we can just see how much Congress doesn't understand tech. But I think, you know, bottom line is, you know, it has been a witch hunt for a long time and I think it'll continue to be. I think you want to own tech in your portfolio, but I can't emphasize enough that tech is fully valued here. Um, at this point, the tech sector trades at like 30 times forward earnings. 
And when you start looking at the overall market, Maria, there's so many good bargains out there. If you start looking at small caps, which have basically broken out over the last couple of weeks, their earnings are going to increase by like 180 percent next year. So I think you have to be really smart here as an asset allocator for my clients. We are definitely diversifying out of big tech. We don't we don't just own big tech. And I think that's the smart move here, because at some point here, that music's going to stop. Yeah, but would you buy any of these stocks or do you want to hold? Would you want to sell those stocks if they lose that immunity? Um, no, I don't think you sell those stocks here because I think at the end of the day, look, their 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 growth still potential is still phenomenal here. Um, but I think the bottom line is you want to take some profits, you want to diversify some of that money. So no, I don't I don't think you sell outright here just because of regulations. We know, you know, back in the day, IBM was under you know a lawsuit with the. With the government, that didn't pan out to anything. Microsoft uh, for a long time was. So I don't think that's going to affect how these stock prices uh, move. All right. We will, we will leave it there. Great to see everybody this morning. Thanks for the word on Wall Street. Dennis Gartman, Ryan Payne, and Rebecca Walser. Great word on Wall Street. Much more ahead this morning coming up. The road to the White House. We're going to take a short break, and then we have hit.